So welcome to this video of 10 of my favorite Kurt Rosenwink licks. I'm very excited because those licks are very cool and you can see sort of how he applies all that knowledge that he shares in his master classes like long form arpeggio, half tone, whole tone and a lot of stuff and I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> the chords that the line is being played over it's an A flat 7 sus 4 with a 10 so with a 3 in it it's like a Herbie Hancock voicing going to D7 altered chord D flat major E7 B7 so if you want to sort of a D flat major tonic going to the parallel minor on the B flat minor and let's have a look what he's playing. So first of all, if you have a sus chord, you can always play the dominant sevens it's arpeggio, like the A flat seven arpeggio in this case. And that's actually what he's doing here, which I find a complete relief, right? So you don't have to do anything fancy on a sus chord. And he's also playing sort of a long form arpeggio like this. Right, so starting with one note, but then he has those two notes per string. So he's starting with this long form arpeggio and then switching into the D7. With this pattern, which is like a D whole tone scale, right? like how it lays on the fretboard, it's very symmetrical, right? And you can just shift it very easily, just the same pattern, right? And so sort of he just like translate from the S A flat 7 arpeggio, which has like a whole step here into this whole step thing of the whole tone scale. And then he continues on the D flat, which is like a D flat major arpeggio with a nine. And then already transferring into the next chord, which is a D7, and then this thing happens. This is a very cool moment because basically he's playing the D7 half note whole tone scale, right? Just descending in a very nice phrasing. But he's navigating two chords at the same time because, right, you can shift the half tone whole tone scale in minor thirds, right? And he has the D7 in which he starts this phrase and he has the B7 and of course it works over both chords and but then also the B7 resolves to the B flat minor. So it's a very nice way of connecting those two chords. And also connecting it via the B right when the B comes. So he's not only playing the scale in a descending way but he's also very conscious about the chords that are under it. How Deep is the Ocean, one of my favorite jazz standards and it's basically starting on the three on the third bar in the form and then you can think if you want to think about the chord like C minor, D7, going to G minor, D7, going to G minor. He starts out on the C minor chord with a C minor pentatonic if you want to and then D7 comes up.
very long stretch of tension and you can think it's like the altered scale, right? Filled up with chromatic passing notes. And then this D could be like the five of the G minor chord. And on the D7 you can sort of see this A flat triad, right? Going to the G minor triad. So what we can take away from this is that we can think about chords lasting longer that they are already written down on the paper like a very long D7 as long as we resolve what we are playing like in the end to the G minor which is super clear as long as you play a clear tonic nothing can happen. <laughs> Mitch is another tune which has a lot of chords and it's quite complex but at the end I found a lick that works on a 251 which is great and it's a 251 in D flat minor and it's like E flat 7 right transforming the 2 chord into a dominant 7th chord 5 to the D flat minor right so on the E flat 7 he's playing like a diminished arpeggio right E diminished, right? Starting on the flat 9 of the E7, E flat 7. And very beautiful polos. And then going to the A flat 7. 5, 4, 3, right? And then enclosure is the root of the A flat, but also the 5 of the D flat minor. I like this a lot. That sounds very good. It's like 5, 3, Five. Very clear D flat minor again, right? And then enclosure again. Enclosure of the root. example of a linear line the chords move in major thirds right and the line connects via the color notes right like starting on the G flat the C on the B flat the E on the D minor so in this case not the chords dictate what you're going to play but the melody just weaves through them. is on Woe from Domi and Shady Beck and it's really fascinating to me so first of all this tune is in 3-4 and also here the same thing as an East Coast love affair we have those shifting like minor 7 chords right like two bars of F minor A flat minor B minor then the D flat major and yes yeah, so he starts on the F minor with this lot of hammer on and pull-offs going on here, right? So, and the emphasis is really on the last note. So you can think about it like an ornament. And then I think something like a quintuplet is coming up. And connecting the F minor to the A flat minor 7, 11, right? So, right, the connecting points are always so important. F minor the C on the F minor, right? But then the D flat sort of makes it clear we're on the A flat now. now. And then this becomes the new connecting point, the G flat, because it exists on the A flat minor. 
but it's also the F sharp on the next chord. The B minor, right? And then playing on the D flat, just playing like a D flat major, Pedro. Could also say the D flat major scale up here, right? And then just moving this one note to the F sharp when the B major comes, right? And this is something that I hear a lot in his playing, is like this one note, right, that is shifting by a half step, this chromatic thing that makes it clear where the chords connect. It's just like really important to be sure where notes can stay on the chord and where you have to shift them. And if you can shift them by a half step, that's great. <laughs> Beauty, this new record is very cool. I highly recommend listening to it. I also have like the you know the the vinyl record. I'm so excited today, I can't talk. I'm sorry. So, anyways, it's a 251 in D flat major and it's like three three beats each, right? Two, three, but then the A flat. gets two bars, it's a monk tune, right? So, and he's playing like, on the E flat minor, he's playing something like, um, so on the E flat minor, he's playing something like a G flat major arpeggio. We all know that you can do that, right? Play a major seven arpeggio, starting on the third of a minor seven chord, right? But then already again, going into the half dot whole tone scale. I like this so much. I think that he sometimes, that's just my opinion, uses those symmet symmetrical scales like to get a cr over the fretboard, right? Like in a very logical kind of a way and then connects into the next scale or next chord, right? So for example, you can play the whole tone, half tone scale like in whole steps, right? Emphasizing the whole step like a pattern, right? And then he's sort of sick of it and then he is continuing playing a whole step but then diverting into the D minor pentaton. Which kind of reminds me of the first lick, right? Just like shifting one part of the, of the logic, right? Like of the architecture and then leading into something else and it sounds also cool. Cubism is another one of my favorite tunes. Mark Turner ends his solo with sort of a major seven arpeggio as well. So be sure that you listen to this connection, right? So Mark Turner ends his solo and Kurt picks up on this phrase. I love when something like this happens, right? Sort of he had his time to speak and now it's Kurt time, but they're connecting, right? And so it's very complex harmony. So it's, so it's very complex harmonies, right? But still 
it's music that you can hear right and I just want to take some of the snippets that you can understand, that I can understand in this case. So he's playing those three chords right and then on this B flat minor he's playing the D flat major triad, right? Arpeggio. So this is something we already know that we can do that and it sounds nice. And then on the E7 sus4, right? It's like a shape, I don't know, but I think really that you might think in shapes that sound good. And you have a th 13, right? Three, a nine, another 13 and a five. So a lot of color notes on the sus chord. This is like an E minus seven arpeggio on the C major, right? I love this E flat triad here. I love the triads on the F right and on the sheet it's like F minor flat six. But you can also think right if the bass just plays the F and you play an E flat triad, right? It's like a sus chord, right? And then moving on to the E major arpeggio on the C sharp minor. That's the same thing like on the major 7 arpeggio on the 3rd, right? And then on the B flat 7. So that's more like an altered dominant sound or you can also think B flat triad and then three going to uh, 4 going to the 3. And here it's like um, flat 13 going to the 5. Ending on the 3. Right, this is already just a little snippet that you can lose. And then he's ending on the D right and the B major comes up right. <laughs> little confused here. And then just again a half step back to the into the B major. energy and is a modal tune has the changes of the word right G minus 7 A flat minus 7 A B A form and I thought it would be great to have a lick that's modal as well right so basically to really break it down the second half of this line or it's actually two lines so the second line is like the release and the first half is the tension so let's start with the easy stuff we're playing over a G minor chord right and he is playing something like this. So this is an enclosure, right? Of the root. And again a triad, very, very clear. Right? G minor, that could be D minor. G minor. Like a pentatonic. So again, so then that's out of the way, right? We have a very clear tonic, but what the fuck, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> is going on before we reach it? I'm going to play it again. So there are many ways how you can think about it. I would be really curious to know what you think about it. First of all, I thought it could be like a D7 something, right? Because it's ending on the G flat, which could also be like an F sharp on the D7, right? So let's try to understand if we can think about it as a D7, right? So superimposing D7 G minor on this chord progression. So, right? So this could be like flat nine. Flat 7 of the D7, right? Again, this flat 7. Like a bebop scale if you want to. Ending on the sharp 3. Sharp 3 on the sharp F, right? <laughs> on the F sharp, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
This is the first phrase of Kurt's solo on Conception. It's a 2-5-1, starting with E half diminished, A7, going to D major. And something very interesting happens here because I think he's outlining like a B flat major 7, sharp 11 chord with the A in the bass. It's like a Phrygian chord. And let's prove what I'm saying. Right, so this is the arpeggio of the chord. And then chromatically to the F, to the flat 13 if you want. And then enclosure of the C sharp, which is the major third of the A7, but also the major seven of the D major. And then he's playing right the D major scale down to the three and then again f starting from the three F sharp minus seven arpeggio and then major seven resolving to the root so again a very clear tonic <laughs> This line stems from a recording with Chris Cheek on the tune I'll be seeing you. Check it out, it's beautiful. And the first four chords of this tunes are like E flat major, G7, and two bars of F minor. And on the E flat major chord, he's playing something like this arpeggio. It's like an enclosure on the root. So I, I see it like an E flat major arpeggio, right? But then with this enclosure for the root. Also long form arpeggio again, right? And then moving from the D to the D flat. And then the E here, beautiful, major seven. And then those two. And then this double stop, stemming from an A flat major triad, I would guess, right on the F minor. He's playing those very minimalistic chords in between. Shall I make a video about that too? Because that's very interesting how he's sort of playing in this pianistic way in between lines. Hey, I hope you're all doing fine and I hope I can inspire you to check out some stuff. Don't be intimidated like I am at times, right? <laughs> But you know, you don't have to like sound like him, but just understand what he's doing because I think he is playing so much stuff on the guitar that not so many people do. And that's what interests me the most. Sort of, you know, from other instruments like piano or horn players, just like opening up new doors. Never stop, stop exploring in a theorem. Bye.